greetings. Just for the heck of it, and because it just felt like a a real testosterone type day, I wanted to put out a top ten um, um, babes of comics uh, list, and ultimately. I couldn't trim it down to 10, so um, this is going to be a top 12. Uh, at number 12, I have um, Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch. Um, as far as comics go, she was probably the first character that I noticed. Um, in quote unquote that way. This is during the George Perez years and whatnot and you know, Scarlet Witch was definitely all that in a bag of chips, so to speak. At number eleven, um, Ruby. I believe she was with the group called the Headsman. And as you can see from what's on her neck, why she fit in with that group. Um, perfectly. Uh, it, there was always something about just having a, a female that had no features that could alter her rather um, spherical globe head into any shape that she wanted. Uh, so Ruby always has a special place in my heart so to speak. Um, number 10, Gamora. You know, she's back in the Jim Starlin days of, um, Adam Warlock. And, uh, well, when your moniker is most dangerous woman in the universe, um, it's kind of hard to turn a blind eye to that. Uh, number nine, also following fo following in the green tinged skin department, um, She-Hulk. Uh, and the two artists that really brought her to my attention um, other than just being a female Hulk would be Brian Stelfreeze and uh, Michael Golden. They were pretty much able to draw her um, so that your you know regular everyday guy uh, could appreciate her. Um, let's see. Where am I at? Next on my list is Batgirl. Be it from the comics or from the TV show. Um, as far as the comics go, it's the uh, black and yellow suited Batgirl as depicted by um, Terry Dodson. But even going back to the uh, 1960s TV show, Yvonne Craig def definitely knew how to uh, work that suit. Uh, next, Thundra. No doubt um, a Wonder Woman wannabe, but there was something about Thundra that uh, I don't know, just caught my imagination. And the fact that she wouldn't mind going toe to toe with the Thing or the Hulk or Submariner or whomever didn't hurt things either. Um, following that would be Lilith, daughter of Dracula. Uh, real dark black leather. 
uh, well, I'm going to say rubber because being trying to be vegan, I want to kind of steer away from the le from the leather deal. But um, you know, glossy black rubber suit. Hey, it worked for Kate Beckinsale in Underworld, so Thunder was definitely her predecessor. So uh, it's all good. Um, continuing with the rubber suit is Pavane. Um, for those of you who remember uh, Shang Chi, master of kung fu, she was um, probably one of the first um, villainesses uh, to sport. Uh, a bustier, um, very provocative for that time. So, uh, pretty much enough said there. Um, closing in on the top three, uh, number three would be Tigra. Um, Back in the day, checking out Marvel Chillers. Uh, she wasn't something to be overlooked by uh, any stretch of the imagination. Number two is Huntress. And I'm pretty much talking about um, her earlier days. Um, not the original, the original was that real campy, um, Bob Kane-ish looking um, character. I'm talking about the Huntress um, when DC were getting their um, feet wet again with this Earth 1, Earth 2 jazz. And Joe Statton um, one of DC's artists back in the day, uh, I believe he was the one that came up with the um, with that Huntress, with that Huntress's outfit back then, and it worked then, and uh, I think it works um, pretty well today. Also, even though she's not wearing that anymore. And number one. Gotta go with Aurora. Yep, Storm of the X Men. Um, I wasn't able to pull the Mike Golden picture that I liked that uh, showed his representation of uh, Storm, but uh, largely because of him and limitedly because of John Byrne. Storm pretty much was uh, the hottest thing going around, and uh, Frank Cho is another guy that's been able to capture her uh, attributes uh, somewhat masterfully. Anyway, those are my 12 picks on what I guess I'll call uh, Testosterone Sunday. And uh, night out.